Meet Sarah. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Sarah has been trying very hard to maintain social distancing and stay safe. Unfortunately, yesterday, Sarah started to feel unwell. Her symptoms included dry cough, headache, fever, and a loss of taste and smell. Sarah immediately went to her local testing center for a COVID-19 swab and a day later found out that she tested positive for COVID-19. As many of you are familiar, the virus officially named SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 is a type of respiratory virus that has sparked a global pandemic. As of October 30th, 2020, there have been over 45.5 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 worldwide. A lot is still unknown about this virus and a significant amount of preliminary research is being published in order to increase the availability of information that is being discovered. Individuals who are older and or have pre-existing medical conditions are at a significantly higher risk for severe illness as a result of COVID-19. Over the two days following Sarah's positive results, her symptoms progressively got worse and she began to experience difficulty breathing and confusion. After attending the emergency department, Sarah was admitted to the hospital with serious symptoms to be monitored. Many other patients in similar situations to Sarah have also reported to experience neurologic symptoms or symptoms that affect your brain or nervous system. In one study conducted in ICU in France, two-thirds of patients experienced neurologic symptoms. Although neurologic symptoms were experienced by patients of previous coronavirus outbreaks, such as SARS or MERS, the high percentage of people with severe COVID-19 illnesses experiencing these symptoms have made it a pressing concern for physicians. This is because symptoms have been recorded to last for months following disease recovery. After Sarah's headaches and fevers, she is experiencing confusion and disorientation throughout the day. She is closely monitored and doctors believe there could be a number of reasons after reading recent reports. Researchers from Liverpool published several reports of patients with COVID-19 experiencing swelling and inflammation in the brain tissue. While another study found that those affected had experienced the deterioration of myelin as a result of direct infection of the brain. Both these scenarios of inflammation and infection are very different and would require entirely different treatments. However, it is difficult to define this because the virus is harder to find in the brain compared to other organs. In many of these cases, the neurologic symptoms became more life-threatening over time. 62% of patients had experienced damage to the brain's blood supply, such as strokes and hemorrhages, while 32% had altered mental states such as confusion or prolonged unconsciousness, sometimes accompanied by encephalitis, which is the swelling of the brain tissue. So how does this all happen? Researchers and scientists hypothesize the virus may enter the human body through the bloodstream or nerve endings. The immune system then goes into overdrive in an attempt to fight the virus. This produces a potentially dangerous immune response that causes tissue and organ damage. All of these psychological changes created in the body, such as high fevers, unconsciousness, and more, contribute to the brain dysfunction that we see. It is important to realize that, unlike Sarah, not all people with neurologic symptoms had been seriously ill either. Some of the worst neurologically affected patients had only mild respiratory symptoms. Similar symptoms have been seen in outbreaks of SARS and MERS. However, 
fewer people were affected, so very little data is available. The scarcity in data makes it very difficult to understand why some people like Sarah have neurological symptoms while others do not. Due to the increasing number of cases displaying neurological symptoms, researchers aim to answer the following questions. Why is the brain being affected? Are these effects created by infection or the immune system? And last, how does the virus enter the brain? Since both the infection and the impact on the immune system require completely different treatments, it is essential for researchers and physicians to correctly detect the problem and assess accordingly. Sarah has been kept under observation with physicians and neurologists to ensure her symptoms do not lead to further complications. Doctors continue to closely monitor and evaluate Sarah's neurological activities. They also continue to approach various treatment plans to appropriately manage her symptoms. A current study performed at McMaster University examined and monitored patients with neurological-related COVID symptoms, like Sarah. In this study, they used unique prompts, data collection, and machine learning algorithms to observe and better understand the brain activity in high resolutions. The researchers developed advanced techniques to reveal neurocognitive dysfunctions with precision. Thus, such techniques enable doctors to provide individual treatment and rehabilitation for each patient. For future studies, researchers should continue to perform more autopsies to gain a better understanding of the impact of SARS-CoV-2 on the brain. Researchers should also continue to perform clinical trials and physiological studies to better understand the changes in neurological activities. To learn more about the neurological involvement of COVID-19 within a scientific perspective, stay tuned for our upcoming video that will cover the hypothesized mechanisms of what happens inside the brain when an individual tests positive for COVID-19.